Your status will be different. You will be called the Zawar of Aba Abdullah. Haji comes back, he is called Haji. Haji Mohsin Bai, Al Haj Mohsin Bai, Mohsin Bai with so many Hajis. But once you come back from Ziyarat, you are Zawar. And the status of Zawar, if I may, very briefly. This has been narrated to me through a very close confidant of Ayatollah Khui Marhum, who passed away, may Allah elevate his status. And he told me that during the olden time, during the time of Saddam, around that time, there was a lady, old lady from India, who came for the ziyarat of Imam Hussain and when she came, her back was bent, her eyesight had become weak, her teeth had all fallen off, she couldn't hear properly. She was at that stage of her life, and she came for ziyarat of Imam Hussain Young people around in the group who were with her, you know, usually like to make a small talk or make a little bit of mischief. So this young lad is telling that lady, Arabudia, Abhi aai ho, aankho se dikta nahi, kaano se sun nahi sakti, muh se kha nahi sakti, kamar kham ho gai, mola ka roza nahi dek sakti, kumbad nahi dek sakti, roshni nahi dek sakti. A translate for those who don't understand Urdu, that, oh lady, you have come now, when you can't eat, when you can't hear, when you can't see, your back is curved, and you can't even see up there the dome of Imam Hussein, which is shining, which is glittering. She turned around and said only one sentence. She said, Beta, ek ek pai karke jama kiya hai, logon ke bartan aur kapde dhoke, tab jaake is umar mein itne paise jama huye ke mein ziyarat pe aasa. She said, my son, I have collected every single penny by washing clothes of the people and dishes from house to house and collecting and saving from there, that's when I've been able at this age to have enough to come for the ziyarat of Abba Abdullah. He felt very belittled, and after that, he started taking extra care for her. The trip finished, they all came back to Baghdad airport, and they were ready to leave. Old lady took her passport and boarding card and all her documents, went in a corner and went to sleep. And that olden days, if you know, and if you have traveled, there was no computerized count and check, and if passenger X is not in, upload the baggage and upload the passenger and things like that. Plane came, they boarded all the passengers quickly, door closed, gone. The old lady is sleeping in the corner. A few minutes later, after the flight had taken off, the lady woke up with her passport and everything, and she's moving around. She can't see anybody from the group. The whole group is gone. She goes and finds an attendant, a person, an airport staff, and she shows the boarding card passport. Hindi? India? Gone. They're gone. You know what? They're gone. So, yeah. so she's asking this man, which direction is Karbala? Just like that. She says, which direction is Karbala? I mean, go ahead, Karbala is there. She turns towards Karbala and she says, Ya Abbas, with full, full control. She says, Ya Abbas, how did they live without me? How could they live without me? And she said, no. Aircraft is in the air. Captain calls it's a technical problem. We have to return back. <clears throat> the flight comes back to the same door, same gate, opens, everybody comes out. These people come and say, she's standing there. They say, Budhiya Khanti, you left me and you went. They hugged her, they met with her, the flight is all okay. The technical problem, which the captain felt or was shown through his computer, everything is clear. Ready to board. Let's take off again. This is what you get when you do the ziyarat of Abba Abdullah with his ma'rifah, with halal risk, with the right 
intention and the right CR. <laughs> this is what makes you the hamid of one fire gold. This Allah gives you that, that power that when you do the ziyarat of Imam Hussein al -Islam in that situation. Brother, there is a lot of other, you must have heard, you must know how things happen for the wars during the ziyarat, after the ziyarat, between the ziyarat. I don't want to take much of your time, just want to come to the point of walk. The walker. Saj? Sadiqa? Done this life. Everybody's here, and before people disperse and things happen, let me explain everybody about the crowd. Time is too short for us. Assalamu <coughs> alaikum. My name is Naeem. Uh, I just have a few brief words to say, uh, maybe not even a few, five minutes. Uh, my task here is just to talk about the air travel uh, to and from Baghdad. I'm just going to be speaking on behalf of those traveling with the Al Faraj group and anyone else who is not part of Al Faraj, please excuse me. With our group, there are three groups of flights. There's three batches of flights. Okay, two of you are two batches or two little groups are coming with Emirates, and one group is coming with Turkish. On Turkish, we have a total of 83 passengers. We are arriving on the 24th into Baghdad, and we're leaving on the 6th from Najaf. Okay. With the two Emirates groups, one is arriving on the 23rd, and one is arriving on the 24th. Those arriving on Emirates on the 24th will be arriving approximately two hours after the Turkish uh, flight is arriving on the 24th. I'm not going to be dealing with the logistics. I think the Sister Sadika is going to be uh, discussing that with you. I would assume that they're probably going to have their own bus. Well, I want to. Okay, coming in. Uh, those people who are arriving on the 23rd, which is a smaller group, I believe that Sister Sadika is on that flight as well. Yes. So if, for those of you traveling alone, don't worry, she'll be with, it, with you to escort you to God Domain, and we'll meet you there the next day, inshallah. Um, I spoke to one gentleman this morning, which was uh, one of my major notes, is that please check your passports. Uh, somebody noticed today that their passport is expiring within four months from date of departure. Your passport has to be valid for six months from date of departure. Now, from what I understand, the case I was speaking with, which I haven't discussed with you yet, they've already obtained their visa. That's not It's not a problem. As long as they have the cancelled passport attached with the new passport, if anybody, for any reason, has to change a passport, make sure that you tell Canadian passport authorities or whoever the issuing authority is, British or American, that they give you your old passport back. They will cancel the passport and give it back to you, attach or staple the same old passport along with your new passport, and that should be good enough for you to enter into uh, Iran. The new system means that when you apply for the new passport, cut the old passport and give it to you. Earlier they used to take it. Yes. If easy. only, unless and until you demand for it to give, uh, get back, they would give it back to you, cut it and give it back to you. Otherwise they would take it and destroy it themselves. But uh, in, the, in this case, when the visas have been applied for, make sure that you take the old passport back. Okay, so uh, please go home and check the validity of your passports. It is possible it could be expiring and maybe you're not aware of it. So double check that. Uh, baggage allowance, whether you're taking Emirates or Turkish, is two pieces each. I think Uncle Shams is going to tell you to limit it to one piece. But if you want to take clothes and give to a Gharib, you're allowed two pieces each. Each piece cannot exceed 50 pounds, okay? Uh, make sure each of you are carrying a copy of your Iraqi visa, which Uncle Shams will be giving you a copy, because at time of check-in you'll need it. If you don't have it, they may not board you. Okay? Those people who are traveling on Emirates, uh, for those of you who have booked through Gala Travels, you should already have a hotel confirmation because your stopover in Dubai will be approximately 12 hours. 
That will give you a visa as well as a hotel to exit the airport. Please double check you have this confirmation. Uh, otherwise, you won't get a hotel and you'll be stuck in the airport for some 12 hours. For those of you who are stopping in Dubai more than the transit period, please ensure you're in possession of a visa, okay? For those of you who are stopping both while going in as well as while coming out, these are for the Emirates passengers, please make sure that the visa that you're going to arrange on your exit is done after you enter, okay? Because we've had situations before uh, where if you're, en if you're issuing both visas, they're actually going to end up using the visa for your return on your outbound when, when you're getting into Dubai and on your way back, uh, you won't have a visa to exit. If you need more, uh, if you have any more questions about this, please ask me. For those people who are traveling Turkish Airlines, we have brought all of your tickets with us today. You can see uh, my wife Minaz, who's going to be sitting at the back at the end of the seminar. You can pick up all your electronic tickets from us, just really a piece of paper in a ticket document. We have received and we've actioned most of your seat requests, those people who are traveling on Turkish, and meal requests. However, if anybody has special meal requests, or seat requests, or for a wheelchair, please let us know so we can request it on file. That goes for Emirates as well as Turkish, okay? Uh, I've been getting questions whether the food is halal or not on the plane. Um, all I can tell you is what the airline tells me, and if they tell me it's halal, this is what I can tell you. For those of you who wish to take precaution, the best, the best bet is probably order a vegetarian meal. It's probably the safest bet, but it's, it's, it's totally up to you. Um, as for those people who are traveling Turkish, there's been a lot of question about what to do when we get to Turkey. As I mentioned in my email, the hotel in Turkey is included for you, and it's a free hotel. We have about a 12-hour stop in Turkey, which means we're getting there at 3.30ish, and we're leaving at about 4 in the morning, so it's 12 hours. By the time you get off the plane, if you wish to take advantage of the free hotel, you have to actually check out of the airport. Don't check out your luggage. Your luggage will be going all the way through to Iraq. But you do have to pay a visa fee if you're a Canadian passport holder. The visa fee is $60 Canadian. And if you exit, you'll be taken to a, a, a hotel, which they cannot specify in advance because they work with about 20 different hotels. The process normally takes about an hour to an hour and a half. So by the time the plane lands to the time you're in the hotel, it may take about an hour and a half, inshallah. Sometimes it's, it's, it's even been longer than that as the group is bigger. You'll have to probably leave the hotel about two hours prior to the departure or two and a half hours prior to the departure. So essentially you have about nine hours to work with at the hotel if you're interested in taking that. Cost is $60 per person for the visa, okay? I've had some people who are interested in actually staying inside the airport hotel, which is connected to the terminal for which you do not require a visa. I had told you that the rate for this hotel is 140 euros. Today I have to correct myself. Because the hotel inside the airport has two sections. One is called the air section, one is called the land section. We cannot stay on the land section side because you need a visa to exit. We can only stay on the air section side. So those people who wish to actually purchase a room at this hotel, it's sold in hours, so by the hour. We have zero to three hours, three to six hours, six to nine hours, and nine to 15 hours. As we're stopping for 12 hours, I would say that the the optimum would be six to nine hours. And to give you an indication of the pricing, it's about 150 euros for a double occupancy and 160 euros for a triple occupancy, plus local taxes. I would say that equates to about something about $250 for a six to nine hour stay. So you guys can do the math. Whatever works out better for you, you're, you're free or at liberty to do that on your own. For those people who just wish to hang around in the airport, you can do so. Last time I was at the airport myself, what I did is, we were there for about four or five hours. There's a section that not a lot of people know about that's not really an option for Canadians, but if you can talk your way into it, it's a section with maybe about 200 beds separated by, in squares of 20. You catch a lot of Nigerian people there who can't get exit visas, and it's a place to relax. There's also a Salat room in that airport. For those of you who wish to stay there at the airport but do not wish to exit to, uh, to use the free hotel, the question is, do we get meal vouchers? And the technical answer is no. But we've had many people who have gone to the counter and said, look, I'm here for 12 hours, I need meal vouchers, and they've been successful in getting them.
So that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, I really don't have much more to say, but if you have questions, I am here to answer them. So, please. Sorry? Yes, insurance. There have been some people who have purchased insurance already. Uh, if you're still in, interested in purchasing insurance, you can call our offices, you can speak to Minaz or me. Whether it's medical, it's too late for cancellation, though, isn't it? No, we can still do the cancellation, okay. but um, uh, if you just want to explain that the medical and the cancellation is based on, not based on anything that you do. Right. Okay, so because of the government advisory in Iraq, that means the Canadian government deems it is not safe to travel to Iraq, if you do purchase medical insurance, that you're, then you're not covered in the event of an insurance claim that may be arising out of an act of war, as an example. I don't want to go into details, but I'm, I'm sure you get the idea. You should, you should be aware of this. Sorry, it's in US dollars. So this is $60 US per Canadian passport holder. Any other questions, feel free. That's, that's about it. Now, coming back, you won't get, you'll get tired, tired of me very soon, inshallah. <laughs> but uh, I'll keep on coming. Yeah, I told you about Kamil Ziyar. This is the book. You can contact uh, Brother Abbas Habib here, and uh, he will be more than happy to explain you how to get your copy. Those who are coming on Faraj Group, we have, uh, through ourselves or through donors or whatever, managed to have a few things for you, which are on the desk, and uh, you can collect it one per family. There is a Isne Dukul card, which is common for all the Ziyarat Zaris, wherever you go. You just have to add the name of the personality or the uh, Imam or the Rosa that you are entering. There's uh, shown here with dot, 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 and it is the same. So you take the permission because you can't enter any household without the permission, and that goes exactly the same for the houses of our imam. Take the permission, and it is narrated that after you have read the permission, a tear rolls down your cheek, and you say, that is the acceptance that my mola has welcomed me. Shibli, when he says, when you go for Hajj, and regularly uh, Brother Akil explains on that Shibli thing, that Imam, same, our fourth Imam, that Shibli, you went for Hajj? Yes. Did you say Labbaik? Yes. Did the reply come? Labbaik back, or it came La Labbaik? So similarly, you go all the way there. Our Imam is too kind and too generous. He will not say La Labbaik. But, Cheer down the cheek. Thank you, Imam. Thank you for softening my heart. And thank you for giving me the permission to come and visit you. There is this book, Ziyarat of Iraq, Q Fatima. We have gotten it printed. This copy, one per family, because this is just information of all the Ziyarats in Iraq. This is from UK. It is available on our website as well as Q Fatima website. And you can download it on your iPods or your iPads or all the electronic gizmos. But uh, there is a collection on page number 99, which please add a meme to it, because the meaning completely changes in the ziyarat. And while reading this time, I came to know, unfortunately it was late, that it says, Assalamu alaikum ayyuhal mazloom wabn al-mazloom. It should be... Ayyuhal Mazloom, Wabn al Mazloom. Instead of that, the mean is missing there. So it reads Ayyuhal Zulu and changes the complete meaning of that. So please, if you do take this book, we haven't had the time to correct it. There's a mean to be added on page number 99. That is for this book. And then we have Labbaik Ya Abadillah. Some of the hadiths are in there. You can take one per family for. This is also courtesy of a uh, brother and sister who spent their time three, four years ago when we were going for the ziyarat and they put it together and we have just gotten it reprinted and may Allah <coughs> bless them with all the glad blessings and ziyarat of Imam again and again. These two are the common books 
which are available from public store. They have the ziyarats of Iraq. You can take them, you can buy them, or you can have them. And finally, there are books available in every haram for all the ziyarats, but they are in Arabic. If you can read Arabic, and if you are okay with that, we will be doing the first ziyarat together. But mashallah, we have uh, very nice reciters, and they will explain. But if you do need, these are the books that you can acquire before you go and prepare. The main important thing is, please prepare for the trip. Please get ready for the trip. It is narrated <coughs> and recommended that before the ziyarat of Abba Abdullah, one should fast for three days. You see, you have to get your mindset, your heart set, your body set. You, you should be focused for the ziyarat. You're not going to Cuba for Christ's sake, for Lord's sake. You're not going for a vacation. Take that out of your mind. It is the Christmas holiday. It is a vacation period. But this is the thing which will take you from earth to heaven. This you will feel. And those specifically and especially those who are walking. I might sound harsh. Forgive me if I, have, if I am hurting somebody or if I have hurt somebody. It is not my intention because I speak loudly for my ears to hear and my heart to get and sink it in me, for me. I am talking this love for myself so that I can hear out loud and clear. Brothers and sisters, about walk. This a child later on. Are you guys interested in having chai right now or on your way out? Time is limited. I will have a 15 minutes taken out from my time and that will cost me. On their way out, they can take chai and then they can go. I hope you guys don't mind. I won't do this to you in Iraq, I promise. I promise you will have your three meals properly. But here, because time is very limited and we have to be back for namaz. And Imam Sadiq said, those who take namaz lightly, they will not get our shafa. So what are we going for ziyarat for if we are going to during namaz time, sit here and talk about the other. Beat the whole purpose. So, I have a policeman behind me, so I'm, I'm blessed, alhamdulillah, that Allah has blessed me with two daughters, and they are my beacons. They are my light, and may Allah keep them that way. Brothers and sisters, this walk which we are going to take, there is, there is a writer, there is a thing, walking guide, which is on the table. You can pick up one, and on that, there is all the details of how long the walk is, and I'm sure everybody has got an email on that, and everybody knows more than I do, though we have people with us like Nayarin, Mahmood and others who have uh, come for the walk, the brother, and uh, Muhammad Ali Bai and Mohsin Kamalia, and they have all done the walk, and they will be, alhamdulillah, and inshallah, be able to take small, small groups, and we will be able to move around in that situation. Walk that we are doing is not a marathon. Nayare, are you listening? It's not something that we have to be there and we have to achieve something. There is no medal that is going to be given if you do it within this number of hours or this number of time or whatever. It is a walk whereby you are joining our Imam and you are joining Bibi Zainab Salam you guys can see, am I coming in your way? Especially you. So, this is a 90 kilometer walk from Haram to Haram. When the lamppost starts and the numbering starts from 1 to 1452, this is our last year's group, you know, with that same flag which is uh, posted uh, after there. And mashallah, uh, they all did an excellent job and they did it very well. 
and uh, I'm thankful to all of them for giving us that opportunity and to serve them. So this walk is your connection that and your solidarity and your show of love to Bibi Zainab and Imam Zainal Abidin. This walk, you can connect with the locals. This walk which you are going to do, this, somebody, when I did my first walk and I went to Karbala, Dr. Ehsan was my group leader and I was with him. And he said, tonight we'll give you, instead of doing the majlis, we will give you the mic to speak your experience and your uh, feelings about the walk. The only sentence that I said I want to speak here or tell everybody is, that this walk is something which you have to experience yourself. There is no movies, there is no pictures, there is no write-up, there is nothing that can justify the true walking experience. During the walk, somebody last year wrote, a uh, uh, press reporter, who from the West who, who had been there and who went through this, he says, this is the longest dining table that I have seen stretching from Najaf to Karbala. This is how it is, absolutely. It starts, as soon as you start the walk, Asnain will give me the confirmation on that, that you wish for something and it is there. You don't need to carry anything with you. Whatever is your wish is getting fulfilled. I remember I had a brother, he was walking with his young daughter who had just become Bali, and the daughter is asking the father, Dad, I want popcorn. Brother is telling the, his beloved daughter that, but I did not take any Iraqi money on me. And, uh, this hundred dollar bill is not going to get you this ten cents popcorn. Here. So the girl is saying, but Dad, you told me that whatever you see, Whatever you want, you will get it. He says, let's walk ahead a little bit, and inshallah we will have something, we'll, we'll, we'll arrange. There, there Uncle Shams is walking ahead, maybe I'll, I'll ask him to arrange for While we are walking ahead, this is, I'm not trying to give you a personal anecdote here, but my daughter asked me, did I want popcorn? I said, yeah, go buy them. She bought it, she had two kernels, literally. I don't want to eat it, I said, why did you buy it? I don't know. I just felt like buying it. I said, all right, hold on to it now. I said, I want to give it to somebody. I said, sure. She turns around. This gentleman comes walking. She hands it over to him. He says, here, take this pocket. He looks at him. He looks at her, looks at me. And he says, what transpired here? I said, Allah lazim, I don't know what transpired. Why? He says, I was just talking to my daughter. And he is here, and he will be in the walk with another group or wherever he's coming with, and you can meet with him, and he will watch for you. And I said, I don't know. I gave it to him. He gave it to his daughter. He says, here, take it. Like a gentleman from London, he's a lawyer. He's walking with me. And he says, Uncle Chums, this is two years ago, few years ago. He says, Uncle Chums, I fancy pizza. I said, Salim, are you out of your mind? We are in Iraq. We are walking. Where on earth are you going to get pizza here? He says, I don't know, just, just came to my mind. I thought, you know, we've been eating all this stuff. What if we can get her a slice of pizza? Uh, forget about it. Let's go and say our prayers. It's Azan time coming. We entered the mosque premises on that road, and he smells pizza. He says, Uncle Chums, I can smell pizza. I said, you are out of your mind. He says, come, come, come. And we went in a corner. There is a guy who's putting bread in the oven with tomato or some kind of, uh, you know, red uh, dressing on it. And as soon as it comes out, he puts cheese on it. Their style of cheese. But it is cheese and bread, panzarotti or whatever you can call it. He was thrilled. He did sish the sugar there. He says, Ya Allah, I just had to wish for it. And it goes on and on. There is somebody who, 3 o'clock in the morning, while we are entering into Karbala, because that's the best time to enter into Karbala, early in the morning, because there is no rush. So we are, we are, we are planned that way, we are entering, and I'm telling them that we go to the hotel, we'll have to go to sleep, because the breakfast is served by our hotel, by our guys, at 
8 or 9 o'clock, 7 o'clock, around that time. So we'll do our first ziyarat from outside. We are not in proper position to go in. Though it is recommended that when you go for your first ziyarat of Abba Abdullah specifically, you should be hungry, you should be thirsty, you should be tired. And you go with that feeling and you tell Mawla, we know that you are hungry, you are thirsty, you are tired, you are raising yourself on your elbows to see the haram was in camp. So we have come to give you our condolences. This should be your entry there. But we said, no, it's okay, <coughs> let's go. We will be going to the hotel and sleeping for a while. Breakfast will not. Once again, someone from the group, we have all kinds of people like me, right? And he says to me, but uncle, how will I get sleep without breakfast? So wish for it. We turn a corner, coming towards, the, towards Karbala, and there is somebody standing with a table. He has got freshly boiled eggs, still in the shell, fresh diamond bread of Iraq, and some vegetables cut ready. He says, Rayyub Jais, breakfast is ready, help yourself. What do you say to that? How kind and how generous is Aba Abdullah for his Jalza Wars? This is what the feeling you get when you walk. They stop you with their stretched arms like this. And what do they say? Rahmallah Wadi. Huh? Hasnain? They say, Rahmallah Wadi. May Allah bless your parents. Please come and have something. A used car salesman will not do that to you when he wants to sell you a lemon. And he has all the intentions to skin you and take money out of you. This guy doesn't want anything from you. Just because you are the zawar of Abba Abdullah, come and bless me. One person is hanging a plate in his hand with steam coming out. There's pieces of bread in it and a small piece of meat. And he offers me. He says, please, I look at the group. And everybody had just had tea, coffee, everything. We were all done. Shaykh Nafatal, come in the front, please. And we have seen all that, and everybody is telling, no, I'm going to say, thank you, no. But because he was begging so, you know, pleading literally, I took that plate from him. And I took a piece of it, and I offered them, I said, let's all take one, one piece, and your man will like that. You have to respect him. Poor guy is begging of us. We put that small piece of bread which was soaked in that gravy. It was heaven. I have not tasted that kind of morsel ever in my life. And all of us looked at each other. And he's standing watching us. Sure. He says, Ajaba, did you like it? I said, nah. Yes. But come inside. There is more inside. There is hot. There is fresh. There is ready for you. Who on earth is doing this? A young lad from Dubai who was with me, he, he saw all this and he's telling me, Uncle Shams, I have heard that when Imam Zaman Ajal Allah Faradu Sharif, when he establishes his kingdom, it will be everybody who wants to give. Nobody wants to take. You have money. Pay for homes, you have zakat, you are standing on the middle of the road, let somebody take this responsibility off me, and there's nobody to take. He says, I heard that. But when I walked, I felt as if I was living in that time. Where everybody is just ready to give. Somebody asked me, I asked them where do they get the money from? Who's doing the planning? And you know. Walid, where we stayed at the 14, uh, 1400, <coughs> that guy, I had to translate. So I translated to that boy, Walid. I said, Walid, this gentleman, he says, you are from business community, right? I said, yeah, we are full jazz. <laughs> so he says, you know what? We only do it for the happiness, mother, and We don't do no planning. We don't do any fundraising. We don't go out and ask for anybody anything. We just have to make an intention. We do an intention. We want to do timman and thima. That is rice and kichra, something like kichra. They put it on top of the rice and they serve. We want to do 
you know, chola or lalia or whatever. We want to make dal, we want to make tea, we want to make coffee. Whatever we want to make, we just make an intention and that's about it. And to that, he narrated another mojiza and a story from a small town, which is on the way from Basra. From people walking from Basra, seven days, eight days they are walking. And this is another very heavy duty story. Maybe during our trip somewhere, I will give you, narrate you to that story. This time is not on our side. So, coming about the walk, please, 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 remember, well, name. Remember, don't take new shoes. This is a personal, personal recommendation from me. A new shoe needs to settle in your feet. When you wear a new shoe, you wear it for a day, you take it off, you wear it again to go, you take it off, both your foot and your shoe are both gelling with each other. I know of people who just bought the best walking shoe or best jogging shoe or whatever. They wore and they started the journey. Half way, not even half way. 20 kilometers on the road, full of blisters. Because the shoe has not gelled with your feet. And the feet have not got accustomed to the shoe. So use the old, oldest shoe that is the most comfortable in your feet, which you know when you wear, you can walk with it. Make sure of that. Make sure that you are, like I was saying, all about spirituality, physically also. Make sure that you are, if you want to walk, you are physically also in that situation. You have started practicing or walking at least a little bit every day. I don't mean to say you should walk every day 20 kilometers. No, no, no. At least few kilometers a day, if you are walking, your calves, your muscles, 